In this video, I'll explain how storage slots are allocated to state variables that store a single struct. The way that state variables that store a single struct is stored inside EBM storage follows the same rule that we have covered so far. Data is stored in the order that they are declared, and data that are less than 32 bytes, if possible, will be packed into a single slot. So, for example, the first state variable that is declared is this one. The struct is called single slot, and I named this state variable single. The first field inside this struct called single slot is unit128 named x. Since unit128 takes up only 16 bytes, we still have 16 more bytes that we can fit inside slot 0. The next two fields, unit64y and unit64z, will take up the other 16 bytes. x will be stored in slot 0, followed by y, also in slot 0, and followed by z, also in slot 0. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have another struct called multi-slots, and we know that this state variable will be stored starting at slot 1. In slot 1, we'll have unit256 named A. This is 32 bytes. The next field, unit256B, will take up another 32 bytes. So A will be in slot 1, B will take up slot 2, and C is UN256, so that's also going to take up 32 bytes. So C will take up slot 3. So over here, this multi-slot struct will take up slot 1, 2, and 3. For the next example, I'm going to use assembly to read the data that is stored in slot 0, slot 1, 2, and 3. So the first function, I'll call it function test get single slot struct public view returns uint128. We'll get the value of x, so this will be uint128. We'll get the value of y, this will be uint64y, uint64z. And we'll use assembly to get the value of x, y, and z. All of this is stored in slot 0, so we'll have to use some bitwise operator to get the values for x, y, and z assembly, we'll first get 32 bytes from slot 0, and this will represent all of the data for x, y, and z. That we'll call it s colon equals to s load from slot 0. This will load 32 bytes from slot 0. Okay, as a reminder, here is how the data is stored inside this s, which is 32 bytes. Starting from the right and going left, we have the first state variable. This will be the field x inside the struct single slot. This will take up 128 bits. Next, we have the field called y. This will take up 64 bits. And finally, we have a field called z, which will take up the last 64 bits. Okay, to get the value of x, let's say x is equal to, all we have to do is just load x. And this is because s is 32 bytes. s is 32 bytes, or this is 256 bits. The type of x that we declared over here is x is 128 bits. So when we assign the value of s to the variable x, the first 128 bits starting from the right and going to left will be loaded, and the next 128 bits will be cut off. So here we don't have to do any bitwise operator to get the value of x. Next, let's get the value of y. y is equal to, the value of y starts after we skip the first 128 bits. So we can get the value of y by shifting this whole s by 128 bits to the right. Shift right 128 for the value s. Okay, and lastly, to get the value of z, again, you'll have to shift right. If we shift right 128 bits, you'll get the start of the value y. And if we shift another 64 bits, you'll get the start for the value z. 128 plus 64, that is 192. Shift right 192 from the value s, and we'll get the value of z. Okay, this is an example of getting the value x, y, z from slot 0, which stores a single struct having the fields x, y, and z. Let's also get the fields for a, b, and c. a, b, and c take up slot 1, 2, and 3. So I'll create the function. Function test get multiple slots struct public view returns uint 256a, uint 256b, and uint 256c. Again, we'll use assembly. And to get the value of the field a, 
a is stored in slot 1, so we'll say assign to the variable a load the value from slot 1, s load 1. To get the value of b, s load 2. And to get the value for c, s load 3. Okay, let's try calling these functions. Hit control s to compile a contract. And then we'll deploy this contract. And then call the function test get single slot struct to get the values that is stored in the state variable single. The value that are stored are 1, 2, and 3. And the values that we get are 1, 2, 3. Next, I'll call the function test get multiple slot structs. We get the values 11, 22, and 33. And the values that are actually stored inside the struct multi slots is 11, 22, and 33.